we are looking at CultureGram's online database. And CultureGram's is simply a framework that allows you to understand how other cultures live. It's primary source cultural and statistical country information. And for our session today, we're going to begin by looking at the library guide for this product, which is a self-help training tool, something that you can use to teach others about the product and to point out all of the content and features of CultureGrams. We'll also do a product overview, looking at content and features of each edition in the CultureGrams reports, and we'll wrap up by looking at the educators' resources, and I'll take any questions that you may have around the CultureGrams database. For training and support, uh, we offer public webinars, and you can access those by simply going to our, our website, ProQuest.com forward slash libraries forward slash schools, uh, or just go directly to ProQuest.com forward slash training. That gives you the opportunity to sign up for webinars on any ProQuest product, including CultureGrams. You can also access our blog. Uh, share this blog, which is an informational blog that is updated weekly, and you're seeing the link for our library guides, proquest.libguides.com, and anytime you have a support question or a technical question, you can reach out to our support team at support.proquest.com. And I will begin by simply going to our uh, library guides page. And library guides, again, are housed at proquest.libguides.com. And if you come down and select K-12 uh, resources, you can find our CultureGrams library guide. And I just want to take you on a quick tour of this uh, library guide uh, to show you what um, – is included here and how you can use this to teach others about the product. So this is a great description of the product. It explains what CultureGrams is. It also gives you uh, a listing of all of the content types. Uh, these are individual country, state, and province reports. Uh, there are four different versions of CultureGrams, and with the subscription, users are able to access all four versions. And this list gives you all of the content types in the left sidebar there. It talks about the curricular uses. This is a multidisciplinary product. It's uh, usable in language arts classes, uh, history, geography, current events, global cultures, and even mathematics curriculums. And the sources that are used here, in addition to the in-country experts, we also use the CIA World Factbook, the World Bank, the United Nations Development Program, the United States Census Bureau, and the Statistics and Census of Canada. Again, in the center of the page, you see a description of each one of the sections or each one of the um, collections. And to the far right corner, we're finding information on the product, uh, recent enhancements and updates to the product. Notice this is from August of 2017. We uh, release any enhancements and updates to this product each year at back-to-school time. You can even um, find more product information and features of the product here on the landing page of this library guide. Here's another uh, opportunity to join a live webinar, to listen to a training video, and to access our support center. There's a few more tabs that talk about our supplemental content. This gives a list of all of the content areas again. Here's another tab on using CultureGrams in the classroom, and this is what we find under the Educators Resources, a collection of teaching and learning tools, and I will go into this collection to review the index of activity types and show you a few of the activities. And finally, the share this blog uh, is the last tab there. But where I will begin is simply by going to enhancements for uh, the year 2016 through 2017. As I said, this is updated. This document is updated uh, at back to school time. So you can look for new enhancements uh, for the 2017-2018 school year uh, to become available in summer 2017. So CultureGrams, again, is a multidisciplinary uh, resource. Uh, this is a guide that will help you to understand how this can be applied to daily classroom usage. CultureGrams can be used to teach global awareness. It also supports reading informational text and also media literacy, 
It supports the building of critical thinking skills and uh, effective communication skills. Analysis of information and data is another skill that can be taught by using the CultureGram's online reports, and uh, it is something that can be used across the entire curriculum. The content is aligned to national, state, and provincial standards. For global awareness, uh, we provide multimedia content in the form of photographs and slideshows, videos, and even interviews with citizens of uh, most of the countries and states, along with famous people biographies. And to date, we have about 209 reports in the World Edition and uh, over 200 in the Kids Edition as well. For informational text, uh, this is a tool that supports complex text that students might need to support what they find in a textbook. Students experience reading informational texts that are written at their own level. Uh, now, in CultureGrams, the World Edition is written at a ninth grade or high school and above level. All of the other editions, the Kids Edition, the uh, States Edition, and the Canadian Provinces Edition are written at a lexile of approximately 450. And additionally, CultureGrams offers primary sources for students to read and analyze in the form of interviews and other content, targeted teaching activities, foster close reading and analysis of information. For media literacy, CultureGrams offers a variety of media types, not only photographs and slideshows, but there's videos and infographics, flags, maps, and audio files. In our learning activities, uh, some of the uh, activities that will teach literacy skills include Geography B, Developing Visual Literacy, Tanzanian Life, and Campaign for the Olympics. And students can use CultureGrams Multimedia to create their own media presentations. At the bottom of this slide, you're seeing a count for the number of photographs that are currently included, the number of slideshows, and videos that are currently available in CultureGrams. For critical thinking, CultureGrams provide a valuable opportunity to develop critical thinking skills, teaching activities in the form of PDFs, again, are available in this collection. Uh, these are designed to foster critical thinking via creative projects, discussion projects, games, problem solving activities, research, and writing activities. For effective communication, there are even more teaching activities that are specifically geared towards teaching these skills. Um, they are categorized under presentation, and these are meant to spark a discussion or debate, uh, allow students to uh, plan a campaign, play a game, or just offer some ideas for an oral presentation. Analysis of information and data is something that can be applied to math curriculums. Uh, this is a way to teach students how to work with data using activities like build your own graphs and tables, or this activity, this uh, build your own graphs and table is available in the state's edition as well. The teaching activities PDF includes a variety of activities related to interpreting data and graphing regional statistics. And again, just to reiterate, this is multidisciplinary. It can be used for social studies curriculums, visual arts, health, mathematics, and even other core curriculum areas. If you need to learn more about CultureGrams, um, you, again, can go to our library guide, and that library guide will point you to some new scavenger hunts that were added to the product. And this is just meant to familiarize students with the product and to give them something to make, something to do, to engage them further with the product. Again, these are included on the library guide uh, for CultureGrams. And to get more information, you can always uh, visit our website or our blog. I've toggled over to the landing page for CultureGrams, and again, these are the four editions that come with your subscription the World Edition being the uh, most advanced uh, edition. Anything that's new within the database will be highlighted on the, the landing page, on the banner for the landing page. So it shows that we have new videos, 
Uh, you can watch a traditional musician or a musical performance in Ethiopia, uh, kids gathering water, a weather, a wedding processional, and, and additional information. But to begin searching the database, I can simply click on the launch button. This gives me an ability to begin browsing the country information. I can use a drop-down menu to select a regional uh, report that gives me an introduction to each region or each continent. And then I can launch into an alphabetical listing and select a country. I can also use the interactive map in the center of the page to select a continent and narrow down to a country, or I can just type in the name of a country. Please know that you can type in more than just uh, a country's name. You can enter any search term that you may uh, need to search as it relates to a country or culture, uh, things like soccer or baseball or football, things that a young person may be interested in. So you can certainly search those types of terms within culturegrams. On the landing page for the World Edition, we see an explanation or a definition of what culture is. It's the set of traditions and beliefs that, uh, that uh, shape the country or the belief system that the, the culture is built up on. And again, I can uh, do this, uh, select a, a regional introduction, and if I go to North America, notice it gives me an overview of the country. I can read more about North America. This is just a, a great entry that talks about the geography, the climate, maybe ethnic groups that reside within the country, uh, religious organizations, and even the economy of uh, the country that you have chosen to explore. So that's what we'll find in the regional introduction. And I'm going to step back to the landing page and, again, jump into the World Edition. And I'll explore a country in South America today. So I'll open up the menu for South America. Again, I'm seeing an overview of the country. I can quickly navigate to another country or another region. And I'll just go to Argentina. So by clicking on Argentina, I pulled up the full text country report for this country. And each report is laid out in this same format, of course. At the top of the page, we have maps. We have five map types, including an outline map, simple map, physical, political, and the National Geographic regional maps that are available, all of these as PDFs. Then we have the Did You Know section. This is meant to give interesting and little-known facts about the country, things that may not be included in a textbook or in a reference aid in your library. So these are unique facts that are, are provided by the author, the in-country author of these reports. Then we have the infographic section, which looks at uh, demographic characteristics of a hypothetical average person in each country. And looking at Argentina, I can enlarge this by simply clicking on enlarge or clicking on the thumbnail uh, for this, um, this graphic. And this is, again, the average person in Argentina. And here it tells us that that person has an, a gross domestic uh, buying power of about $22,600. The median age of persons in the country is 32 years. They have about 10 years of schooling. Their life expectancy is 76 years. And the average Argentinian has one, has, uh, one sibling. And we also find more information about where those persons reside. 92% uh, of the population in Argentina reside within the city. Uh, they are uh, ethnically described as white, or 97% of Argentinians, uh, Argentinians uh, identified by that ethnic group or race. And the language that's officially used in Argentina, along with information on uh, the religion. We also can quickly look at a comparison to the rest of the world. So this is for Argentina. To the right side of the screen, we're looking at the average person in the world who has a buying power of about $15,000. Um, 30 years of age is the median age. The average 
person in the world has eight years of schooling, a life expectancy of 71 years, and one sibling. So this is a, a great tool uh, to uh, compare and contrast uh, cultures and countries and look at the average uh, demographic by country. We can also generate citations for this uh, infographic. So there's an MLA citation. I can copy and paste this into another document as needed. As I move further down this landing page, I have additional files that will allow me to listen to the pronunciation of the name of the country. And I can also listen to the national anthem for the country. So these are, are MP3 files that will play those uh, national anthems and uh, pronounce the, the name of the country. Then we find information on the flag. Uh, this describes what the emblems on the flag uh, may represent along with the colors and when the flag was adopted. So relevant information about the, the flag for each country. And at the bottom of the page, we find country data for each country report. So this is uh, an active uh, chart that will allow me to look at the capital of every country if I select here. But of course, it's showing me the, uh, the capital of Argentina along with the current time, the location of the country, the, the ranking and size of the country by population, the size of the country by square miles and square kilometers, the Human Development Index, which is a number that that measures the quality of life in each country. And this takes into consideration things like infant mortality, uh, education rates, uh, or literacy rates, uh, just a number of factors that determine uh, the quality of life for each country. Those human development indices are broken out by gender for the next category, the gross domestic uh, uh, buying power, adult literacy rates broken out by male and female, infant mortality, life expectancy, and the form of currency that is most prevalent in each country. And note, if I click on the capital uh, data uh, button, it brings me to a graph or table that gives me an ability to look at the capital for every country. And I can sort this information uh, from A to Z or from Z to A for both columns, for the country and territory, or for the capital of each country. So just know that uh, these are live links within the in the uh, the data that uh, country data that will allow you to look at charts that uh, provide that information for each country. And since we've talked about the Human Development Index a little bit, I'll go on and link out to this particular chart and show you uh, the listings for. Uh, several countries here. So again, I can uh, sort this from A to Z. We're showing that Afghanistan comes in at number 169, and there are definitions in our definition section that will give you uh, a better understanding of what is included uh, or how these, uh, these figures are determined. And I'm simply scrolling down to show you where the United States falls within this a listing of Human Development Index. So we're seeing that the United States comes in at number 10, which means that we have an excellent quality of life compared to countries that uh, fall down around number 149 or lower on the list. Okay, so I'm going to use my back button to just step back to my preceding page. Now we've looked at the country data. Let's look at another country and begin to look at some of the uh, other features such as the background, the the, uh, the people, customs and courtesies, and so on. I can reset the screen, go back to the World Edition, and this time we'll go to Europe and select a country like Vatican City, which is the smallest country in the world. Um, we still see the Did You Know section and the ability to listen to the name of the country and the national anthem. But for this particular uh, demonstration, we're looking at the categories that are housed in the left sidebar. These include broad categories like the background, the people, customs and courtesies, lifestyle, society, and at a glance. 
And these are the categories that we uh, commission our in-country writers to provide information for. There's a very thorough review process after the in-country editor has been identified and provide us a rough draft of the report. We review that information for accuracy, send it back to that country. The uh, writer must get someone from the Tourism Bureau as well as a scholarly peer to review information again. And only after that back and forth uh, process is a culture gram ever re uh, uh, reported or added to this database. So we do rewrite the reports in its entirety every five years to make sure that we are uh, providing the most up-to-date information, but periodic changes are, are implemented each year to again reflect the most up-to-date information. So looking at the background of the country, we find information on the land and climate. We'll get two or three paragraphs that discuss land and climate, and we're able to link out to the, to the charts and tables that uh, give us information on the square uh, mile or the area of the country in square miles and in square kilometers. And again, if I link out here, I'll be able to work with the data for every country uh, from that chart. Moving down to population, I'll find uh, information on the population of Vatican City, less than 1,000 people, the population growth rate, and again, all of these will give me uh, the grid or the chart for the entire world, uh, an urban population, 100%. Uh, and I do find some terms that I'm able to find definitions for or, or explore in more detail. Here's my next button that allows me to go to the next section that addresses language in Vatican City. And the official language is Latin. I can move on to the next section that talks about religion. Now, I won't visit all of these sections, but I'll just select a few to uh, give you an idea of the general attitudes within Vatican City. Attitudes naturally reflect devotion to the Pope and Catholicism. And moving further down the page, we can find information on greetings and what's an appropriate greeting in the country. Uh, this uh, product was uh, really begun by missionaries who worked from Brigham Young University who wanted to be familiar with customs and traditions so that they would not offend people when they visited foreign nations. And this is the extensive study guide that that research has turned into. Uh, visiting. So this talks about uh, common uh, practices when visiting within the country or even eating. What do you expect when you're taking a meal in Vatican City or in Argentina or any other country that you may be exploring? Uh, further down the page, we find information on lifestyle, so uh, a makeup of the family structure, and also housing. This talks about uh, materials that are used to build the structures in rural uh, areas as well as metropolitan areas. Now, Vatican City may not be the best example for showing information on family and housing and dating and marriage or lifestyle, but just know that these are categories that are covered for each country. Also, lifestyle. This section covers milestones and celebrations that are observed at birth and at death in each country. We also have information on the recreation in the country, the arts and holidays that are observed. Uh, here we're seeing for Vatican City, Election Day, Easter, and Christmas are the holidays that are described in the report. And additionally, we look at society, such as the government style, these point us to charts that give us the head of state as well as the head of government and the capital of each country. And still looking at um, society, we see information on the economy, transportation and communication within the countries, and this gives us the ability to look at the number of Internet users, the number of cell phone subscribers, and the number of paved roads by country. Now, we'll explore that, uh, those categories a little bit, but just showing you that you can also look at education rates, health, uh, health and uh, wellness information, as well as how to contact the embassy or the tourism bureau 
for each country. So that's what we'll find under at a glance and contact information. So this is a great place to explore some of the uh, charts and graphs. So I'll just look at the number of internet users uh, by country here. So this is great to uh, introduce again to an economics class or, or math class, just anyone who may be working with, with figures and would like to uh, maybe use world citizens to explore cell phone or internet usage. So here I can, again, sort these columns from low to high. And I've sorted the cell phone subscribers uh, per 100 people and just scrolling through the list to give you an idea of some of those figures. And I want to bring the United States into the frame. There's the United Kingdom there. And we, I suspect the United States was really at the top of this list. But just note that at the bottom of the page, there's additional information on uh, the user source, cell phone subscription source. And I still didn't bring the U.S. into the frame, but uh, let's scroll back up. There we are. United States comes in at uh, about 76 uh, users per 100 uh, for Internet access and uh, 127 cell phones per 100 people or 1.2 cell phones per person. Okay, so that's the type of information you'll find in these country reports. I'm moving on to another report, just stepping back to um, the, the world edition. I'll go to North America again, and this time we'll just take Cuba. And this time I'm looking at the right sidebar. When there is a corresponding kids report, you'll be able to toggle between the lower reading level and the, and the upper version or the world edition. And I will link there, but just pointing out a few, t uh, few uh, tools here, uh, users are able to link their account to their personal Google account, to link culturegrams to their personal Google account. And you can do that by simply uh, visiting this link, put in your email address and your password, and that links your account, and it allows you to save any report to your Google Drive account. So that's access outside of the database, uh, a great tool for students to build their own personal collection of articles or, or uh, reports. And you can also use Culturegrams in conjunction with Google Classroom. Uh, a little uh, setup may be required by the administrator at your site, but it's certainly possible to uh, use Culturegrams along with Google Classroom application. Other things that you can do from the right sidebar, you can print the report. You can view this as a full report. There's a text version as well as a PDF available. And of course, you can always email the report. And here are more features, a photo gallery for the country. So in this case, it will be a photo gallery looking at uh, daily activities and lifestyle within Cuba, slideshows, uh, interviews with persons from the country. There's a famous people section, brief biographies of at least five persons from every country, and there are unique recipes for each country. So this gives you, again, uh, visual literacy tools, uh, the ability to find some biographies and even uh, content that you might use in a foreign language class or life skills class, uh, such as recipes. Uh, so let's just visit one of these categories. I'll click on uh, photo gallery, and here we are finding about 30 photographs looking at life in Havana, historic buildings in Cuba, and just overall depiction of daily activities and what life is like. Your students certainly have the rights to use any of these photographs in written and oral presentations, and we can use the legend here to quickly uh, navigate to the slideshows. And these are alphabetically arranged. This might be tourist attractions, just uh, looking at, again, activities such as uh, 
voting and visiting a market, what food is eaten in a country, even sports and activities. So this is, again, an alphabetical listing of activities and slideshows. Uh, I've stepped up to the letter U to show that there are some slideshows on food and kids for the United States. Additionally, we can find uh, more videos that might look at landmarks and tourist attractions. Here we're seeing uh, we have a video gallery that looks at food and common gestures. These are short videos, daily life, a two-minute video there. You can certainly use these in the classroom to teach uh, about culture in this country and also uh, other other uh, features that define a country. We can look at the interviews that give us a more in-depth feel to, to the citizens' viewpoints and, and their religious and political aspects or, or uh, viewpoints. So as I move to the interview section, we'll see that there are, are interviews with young persons, there are interviews with older people. All of these are meant to give you a feel for or what it's like to live in the country. So I stepped up to famous people and now back to interviews. So we see interviews here with young persons as young as 13 years of age. Uh, there's an eight-year-old, Roger. I'll just open up the dialogue there to show you uh, a little bit of what is included in this interview with eight-year-old Roger uh, from Andorra. And it's asking, where was he born? Where do you live now? What do your parents do for a living? Describe your home and describe a day in the week along with your favorite game, sport, and holiday. But when we look at um, an adult interview, like 45-year-old Samia from uh, Algeria, you'll get more engaging questions. Also note that we can translate these interviews into uh, 11 different languages, and we can launch a text-to-speech feature or the read-speaker feature to to listen to the to the interview uh, via that feature. So here we're being asked, or the interviewee is being asked, where were you born? Uh, describe a day in the week. Identify your political or your ethnic group that you identify with. Uh, what languages do you speak? What role does religion play in your life? Describe meal times, your favorite food and your role in the family. So just a way to become more engaged and more knowledgeable about the world's people. So that was interviews, uh, the famous people section. I will just randomly go to the letter M and select uh, Madagascar, actually. And these, again, are very brief biographies of, notice, a king and a queen and a politician. And for demonstration purposes, I will um, let's uh, go to the famous people section for the United States, and I'll just show you some of the uh, persons that are listed here. So just toggling to the letter U, and for the United States, we have a diverse list of persons that are used as famous people. And these are meant to be starting points for your young learners' uh, research and presentations. And moving on to recipes, you'll find uh, five unique recipes for each country. And I'm just going to scroll down and select Argentina since we were working with Argentina earlier. And here's what we'll find, um, a main dish along with directions. There's actually two main dishes there. side dish, there's two side dishes, and finally a dessert. So that's what you'll find for the recipe collection for each country. We also have a flag gallery that gives you more information on each a flag or, or a national flag that's included. And I'm just going to take Austria. You should be able to link back to the country report uh, from the flag gallery as well. Or you can enlarge the flag and also print an outline of the flag. 
And the last section there is graphs and tables. This is where you're able to build your own graphs and tables, comparison tables or comparison graphs. And just keep in mind the data that you can compare, uh, land, population, population distribution, and just slowly scrolling through this list to show you uh, the types of tables and graphs that you can, can build. There are some pre-formatted graphs that look at extremes like uh, the population in each country in uh, millions, so this is broken out uh, in millions. The smallest total populations by country. The world's uh, people under age 15. And we see that Niger has 51% of the population is under age 15. And let's jump down to something like literacy rates. This gives us the percentage of the population that is considered literate or can read at an eighth grade reading level. The lowest male literacy rates, the lowest female literacy rates, and so on. And all of this information can be used to build my own comparison tables. Here are my instructions that I need to hold down the control key to select more than one country. And I'll just scroll down and randomly select uh, few countries, since we're working with Argentina, uh, you can select all Spanish-speaking countries or, or Portuguese-speaking countries, but I'm just going right to the top of the list, selecting five countries, and let's say that I want to compare population under age 15, gross domestic products per capita, and maybe unemployment rates, and internet users. I've been holding down my control key, I release the control key, and choose to create my comparison table. And very quickly, I have a table that I can either print or download as an Excel spreadsheet. Additionally, I can create a comparison chart if I would like to. So just going back to the a comparison graph that is. Uh, so coming back to the comparison graph, I would still have to hold down my control key. I'm still selecting Argentina, and I'll scroll down and select uh, another country that we were working with today, so Cuba, and I'll even go down and select Vatican City since we were looking at Vatican City today as well. all the way to the bottom. So I've selected three countries, and I can select up to four categories. So let's look at uh, gross domestic uh, products, cell phone subscriptions, and we'll also look at, say, energy consumption. So we'll just use those three categories and com create our comparison graph. And very quickly, we have a graph that we can either uh, print out or use online. So that's what you'll find from the comparison graphs and tables section. And I'm just stepping back to that landing page. We can navigate to all of these content areas across the legend at the top of the page. I want to step back to my landing page for the World Edition. Um, I'm just going to take another country. And let's go to Ethiopia and show you that when there is a corresponding KISS report, you can quickly link over to the version of uh, Culturegrams that is more kid-friendly. The layout is still the same. The Did You Know section is just written at a lower reading level. But as your students become more proficient readers, they can be graduated to the World Edition. So um, one major difference is the categories are not the same. They are, there are 20 sections that are covered in the kids edition and more like 25 sections that are covered in the world edition. But if these are looking at, again, the people and places such as land and climate, population, the language that's spoken in the country, and there's more than 80 languages spoken in Ethiopia. There's a section, can you say it, that teaches users to say hello, goodbye, please, thank you. Just the basics of a conversation uh, for uh, the language, the native language of each of the countries. That may be something that may be uh, applicable to your language arts lessons. 
uh, in school settings, also the form of religion that is most popular in each of the countries, and this chart breaks those out by uh, religious groups and affiliations. There's a timeline of the history of the country dating back to the year 5000 BC, and I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom to show you a few of the entries for this timeline, and the last entry was from 2015 through 2018 there. A few more sections I'll visit. Uh, so this is all on the history of the country. Then we can find sections on lifestyle, such as games and sports, holidays, food, and life as a kid. So this will ex explore or explain a typical day in the life of a kid in Ethiopia. We can still generate our citations in APA or MLA format. We can print the full report. We can view the full report or print just sections of the report. And when there are corresponding interviews and slideshows, they are linked here on the landing page for this country report. And of course, these will be the same famous people, recipes, and interviews that were available in the World Edition. Still looking at the features, there's information on the government style for um, Ethiopia. It shows us the capital, who's the head of state, the head of government. Again, I can link out to these, these uh, charts that give me those uh, facts for each country. And at the bottom of the page, I have information on money and government. along with getting around and how to learn more about the culture of Ethiopia in this, in this matter. So here I get a, a physical address, phone number, and a website that I can visit to learn more about Ethiopia. Back at the landing page, in the States Edition, just like with the layout of the other databases, Anything that's new will be depicted on the landing page. We have new recipes for each state, along with major league sports teams that are housed in each state. We have a Native American category. There are some cultural notes, and you can build your own data tables based upon uh, statistics and information from each state. You can download data tables. There's a audio file to listen to the state bird song. You can print out county maps, there's a flag gallery, seasonal climate information, and you can also email the information. So we'll look at the report for South Carolina very briefly. There's the Did You Know section again. The Palmetto State was established in 1788, and it was the eighth state in the Union. Information on the flag, we can print out a PDF the map, including outline map and county map, and some quick facts about South Carolina. There's also a distance calculator that allows students to, to draw a map from any small city in the state to another city, or this can be used to draw or look at distances between uh, countries and cities all around the world. We can also determine the state time uh, from the state reports. And the categories, the climate of the state. There's a timeline of the history of the state dating back to the year 1500 AD. There's information on the Civil War and civil rights struggle. Then we can also look at more information on the people, such as the population, famous people from South Carolina. Native American culture that's specific to South Carolina. So this talks about uh, uh, Native American tribes that were housed or lived in South Carolina. We even have information on the environment, comfort foods, state symbols. This is where we'll find the state bird song and be able to listen to that audio file. The state tree, flower, other symbols for the state of Carolina, South Carolina, 
and of course we can generate our citations in MLA or APA format. Select APA, it generates that citation that I can copy and paste into another document. And for more information, we can visit recipes very briefly, uh, which include two recipes, a low country boil and sweet potato pie are the recipes for South Carolina. And then lastly, we'll look at how to get more information, how to talk, contact the uh, government, South Carolina government website, and discover South Carolina, which should be from the uh, Recreation and Tourism Bureau. We can still build our graphs and tables uh, looking at the state capital for every country or every state. These are just pre-formatted uh, tables that are available. Or if I choose to create my own table, uh, I can certainly do that by using the same steps that I use for creating tables in the World Edition. I can look at information on race and ethnicities and groups, and I can even look at information on education, and other content, such as the most popular baby names, household income, a person's per household, and median income, average time to travel to work. So this is median household income between the years 2012 and 2016. We can still sort these A to Z or high to low and by ranking. And I know you're interested in seeing where South Carolina falls in this list. So we see the median income between that four-year period, $46,000, and it ranked at number 43 of the 50 states. So this is what we find in the, the um, states edition. And lastly, I'm going to the world edition to show you a little bit of uh, the content areas. So there are recipes major league sports teams. You can create your data tables for Canada as well. There are some new maps, political maps, outline maps, and physical maps available for uh, the Canadian provinces as well. So briefly, I'll open up Quebec. And this looks very similar to the reports we've seen for the States Edition and the World Edition. We still have information on the people of Quebec, looking at population, a timeline of the history of Quebec, the Aboriginal peoples, and finally, how to get more information and fun facts. So. Here's the official emblem for the province, flower, bird, tree, tartan, and the provincial coat of arms, and how to get more information on this particular province. I do want to step back to the uh, World Edition to just show you one more thing, uh, selecting another country. Can I just go to Finland? There is a section that gives us uh, more tools such as um, definitions and terminology that you will encounter using this product. So this is concepts and terminology. So this explains all of the terms, economic terms, that uh, a user might encounter when reading the World Edition reports. So communism and constitution and so on. And I'll briefly scroll through this list. We talked about the gross domestic products per capita. So if you need a definition, it's included here in Culturegrams and also the Human Development Index, which measures if a person has adequate health care, education, wages, and can contribute to society. Okay, so all of those definitions are Provided. I'm just stepping back to the report to show you that there's also cultural terms. So these will be presented by country. 
So we have Finland displayed. If I go to the letter C or type in another country like Cuba, uh, then I'll get terms that are specific to that culture. Nothing came up for that country, but these are, again, your cultural terms that can be displayed. And I'm not getting to any that are displaying any cultural terms, but most certainly they are available. Now, the last place that we'll visit is the teaching activities section of the database. And at the lower portion of the page, in the footer, we'll find our teaching activities. This is a collection of about 80 activities that are available within CultureGrams. And these are ways that you can incorporate this product into classroom usage. And just to show you some of the content areas, these are indexed by activity types and by grade levels. So there are activities for grades K through 5, for grades 6 through 8, and also for grades 9 through 12. And I'm just going to use my page down button to get to the index of activities. We have creative projects, discussion projects, games, presentations, problem-solving activities, research, and writing projects. And we see a further breakout of the projects by, by activity type. The great thing about using these activities is you will never need anything but access to the full text culture grams report. And each report has an objective. And in this case, this is a postcard from Canada. It's a creative project and research project, and the objective is that the researcher uh, will create a postcard depicting the highlights of the area. This is related to the anchor standard for reading, more specifically English language arts and literacy uh, standard one there, uh, and then you'll see a benchmark that you can use to, to, to measure or understand this, this standard. This, again, is this activity is is related to the social studies standard, national curriculum social studies standard, more specifically standard H for early grades and standard G for early grades. This talks about the amount of time it takes to uh, prepare for this in-classroom activity, and the only materials needed will be the report, the province's edition of culturegrams and any one of the individual province reports. There's always an extension activity, uh, something to help the educator take the discussion even further. And just moving down to a high school level activity, I'm scrolling pretty quickly, but I just want to get to something that is a high school level. And this is a Citizenship contrast activity, research and writing activity, and the objective here is that the student will evaluate their own national citizenship, what it means to them, and compare their answers to those of the people from different parts of the world. Again, we see all of the standards that are supported by this particular activity. We see reading, social studies standards for high school, National Standards for Geography. The only materials that are needed will be access to the interviews in the World Edition, and we find our instructions along with the extension activity for this high school activity. Back at the landing page for CultureGrams, we have reviewed all four editions, the World Edition, Kids Edition, States Edition, and Provinces Edition. If you're beginning to work with this with early learners, of course, you will, you will use the Kids Edition and States Edition for more high school or public library use. You might begin with the World Edition of CultureGrams. 